our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Scripture reading this morning is coming from Daniel chapter 10. As we continue on in that book this month. I'll be reading one through, verses 1 through 14. I encourage you to follow in your own Bibles. Uh, if you've got a... Uh, you got Bibles in your pews there. I encourage you to bring whatever Bible you'd like to read uh, during the week. I, I personally read out of my iPad a lot. Uh, people have Bibles on their phones. Uh, some of you uh, really just get the most out of a paper book. So whatever your preference is, bring what you'd like to read. Uh, and join us as we work our way through the scriptures. Here God's word is. In the third year of King Cyrus of Persia, a word was revealed to Daniel, who was named Belteshazzar. The word was true, and it concerned a great conflict. He understood the word, having received understanding in the vision. At that time, I, Daniel, had been mourning for three weeks. I had eaten no rich food, no meat or wine had entered my mouth, and I had not anointed myself at all for the full three weeks. On the 24th day of the first month, I was standing on the bank of the great river, that is, the Tigris. I looked up and saw a man clothed in linen, with a belt of gold from Ufaz around his waist. His body was like a barrel, his face like lightning, his eyes like flaming torches, his arms and legs like the gleam of burnished bronze, and the sound of his words like the roar of a multitude. I, Daniel, alone saw the vision. The people who were with me did not see the vision, though a great trembling fell upon them, and they fled and hid themselves. So I was left alone to see this great vision. My strength left me, and my complexion grew deathly pale, and I retained no strength. Then I heard the sound of his words, and when I heard the sound of his words, I fell into a trance, face to the ground. But then a hand touched me and roused me to my hands and knees. He said to me, Daniel, greatly beloved, pay attention to the words that I'm going to speak to you. Stand on your feet, for I have now been sent to you. So while he was speaking this word to me, I stood up trembling. He said to me, do not fear, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before your God, your words have been heard, and I have come because of your words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia opposed me 21 days. So Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me. And I left him there with the prince of the kingdom of Persia. And have come to help you understand what it is to happen to your people at the end of days. For there is a further vision for those days. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Almighty God, as we open up your word this morning, we ask that you will speak to us. Lord, you know what it is that we need to hear this morning. You know our struggles. You know what we've overcome. You know the things we can see and the things that we are completely ignorant of. You know where we've grown and where we still there. So send your Holy Spirit deep inside of us and speak to us at the point of our need. In our minds, our ears, and our hearts to know your voice and to tell it apart from all others. Speak to us, God. Use whatever words I may offer, but you speak to us, that we may know we do your will and yours alone. Through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. We're continuing on in Daniel this morning, and uh, this is uh, the, one of the last weeks we will be going in sequence. We're going to start... Uh, shortly going through some of the visions in Daniel. We've kind of been working our way through the narrative, and we're going to go back and uh, look at the visions for the remaining weeks of the series. In particular, we've been talking about the importance of faithfulness in what God has planned for us. And indeed, it is in faithfulness to God that, that Daniel has been given such amazing visions. 
of what is to come. And here this morning, we see that indeed God has more in store for him. We've been talking a lot about what that faithfulness mean, means as well in the midst of our own culture and our own world. And indeed, there is one of the challenges to our faith in this culture that this text this morning directly addresses and that we're going to dig into here. See, we live in a, an age right now, and this is starting to shift, this is starting to change, but we have been in an age in our world and in our culture where people believe pretty much just what their senses tell them. When Europe was coming out of the Dark Ages and, and the Age of Greece and the Age of Enlightenment was coming around and there were all these advancements in philosophy and logic and science and some amazing things that came out. But one of the things that entered into Western culture through that was this idea of rationalism, this idea that the only thing that truly exists is what we can sense, touch, taste, smell, hear, feel, see. I said one of them twice. Uh, you know, the only things that are there are what we can perceive, that there's not anything else going on except what's in front of me right now. Indeed, this impacted the church even, and this has come through so that there are those who will dismiss anything even moderately supernatural in the scriptures. Thomas Jefferson was a great example of this. One of our founding fathers, a great man, uh, an amazing influence on our country and on our world, but do you know anything about his Bible? So influenced he was by this rationalism that he went through and modified his Bible. And by modified, I mean he took a pair of scissors to it and cut out anything miraculous, anything supernatural. Any prophets bringing people back from the dead, any time Jesus is casting out demons, anything that is beyond the ordinary, got the old cut and paste, and didn't really get pasted anywhere. And this is very common. It's, it, most people don't take it to that full extreme today. Some do. But many people today have uh, a, a way of looking at the scriptures that strips all of the supernatural, anything that is beyond our senses, out of it. They rationalize the times you see Jesus casting out demons as him uh, healing mental illness. They say that the prophets didn't really foretell anything, that these are being written after the fact, and we'll get into that one specifically in a few weeks. They write off the miracles as mythological stories. They'll keep some of the good things Jesus said but they'll dismiss the rest of them. To a lesser extent, many of us today, even if we fully believe in the miracles that are in here and all of the things that we see and the, the stories of angels and fallen angels and things of that nature, even if we fully believe what we read in these pages, we are often so caught up in our day-to-day -day world that we forget that there is something more going on behind the scenes. And indeed, what Daniel shows us here and many other places throughout his, his writing is that there is a deeper reality at work. Daniel here in this passage, uh, and, and, and let, me just, let me just say here, this passage, as many others do, very much grounds what we're reading in reality. Daniel is not a metaphorical story. It is not... A, a, a poetic illustration. This is somebody grounded in a particular time and place in history who is having visions, but he is having them in the midst of life. These are not just symbols and images to point to some other thing. This is a, these are visions that this person is having. Look, he tells us that uh, when he does this, this is on the 24th day of the first month. We have the exact 
day he is having this vision in the third year of King Cyrus of Persia. We could go back on a calendar, circle a day, and say this is the exact day Daniel had this vision. Not only that, but he tells us that he's standing on the bank of the river Tigris. He's locating himself geographically in a specific place. We can go and we can look on a map and we can say somewhere in here, Daniel is having this vision. These are real historical events that are happening. And he looks up and he sees this being. Nobody else with him sees it. They feel something. They know something is different, and they're terrified of it. But only Daniel sees. Only Daniel can perceive. And this is not any normal individual in front of him. The description of him uh, is, is just incredible. And there's, there's all of these different theories of who this might be. And he's described as wearing, uh, as he's clothed in linen with a belt of gold around his waist. This kind of alludes to something that looks like one of the priests, but is a little different. But as it goes further, it's clear this is not a normal human being. His body was like a barrel. It had a gem-like quality to it, maybe shining in some way. His face was like lightning. His eyes like flaming torches. His arms and legs like the gleam of burnished bronze. This guy is glowing in front of Daniel. The sound of his words like the roar of a multitude. This is not a normal voice that is speaking to him. This is a supernatural being that has come before him. And it's not just a dream he's having either because the others with him know something is going on. They can't put their finger on it. They can't see it. They can't hear it. But they're terrified and they get the heck out of it. And, this, and, and, and he falls down on his face, and, and this, this being calls to him and says, listen, I have a message for you. Again, we don't know who exactly this is. There's a lot of different ideas about it. Clearly, this is a supernatural uh, being of some sort, an angelic presence. Uh, some attribute this to being the air archangel Gabriel. Uh, the only problem with this is that in the previous chapter, Daniel meets with Gabriel and knows him by name, and doesn't name who this is here. So you would think if he had just talked to Gabriel, he would recognize that Gabriel has come back to visit him. And he clearly is not, he is awestruck by this individual, but not in a way where he can say, oh, this is him coming back. Some have attributed this to being Jesus. Remember, Daniel, we've also had a vision of the Son of God coming when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were in the fiery furnace, and there's a fourth individual with them. And we said we think that may be where Jesus has showed up uh, one of many times in the Old Testament. The problem with that here is that this individual, uh, as we read, uh, got stopped at the border for 21 days by the prince of the kingdom of Persia. And I don't know about you, but I have a hard time believing that the Son of God is going to have trouble with some minor prince. That he is not going to be able to overcome him on his own. That he's going to need help from some other angel to get past. So I'm not of the belief that this is uh, a messianic appearance in the Old Testament. I could be wrong. Uh, but many others share that concern as well. So what we have here is some unnamed angelic presence that has showed up and is bringing a message to Daniel. Daniel has been in prayer for 21 days, and it's been a time of fasting and prayer for him, not a full-on eating nothing fast, but he is avoiding really anything pleasurable. No rich food, no meat, no wine. Uh, no anointing himself at all. Uh, for three weeks straight, he has not done anything other than take the basic nourishment he needed and pray. When was the last time any of us did anything that dedicated for 21 days? And really, I, I may have gotten a Netflix marathon that was similar. But that's about it. And here he is. He has seen this vision. He is so troubled by what he has seen and the future that is coming for his people and for these kingdoms that he is in, that he has been pouring out his heart to God for three weeks straight. 
And this messenger comes to him and says, the moment you started praying, we heard you. God heard you. And I am trying to get to you with this message. By the way, the Bible, angel literally means messenger. Angelos in the Greek is the word for messenger. But in particular, it often refers to a supernatural messenger as we see in the Gospels and other places. And this, this angel has come and has tried to bring a message to Daniel, but he has been contending with, verse 13, the prince of the kingdom of Persia for the entire time Daniel has been praying. Now, it would be easy to dismiss this as just being the king of Persia, except we've just named him King Cyrus at the beginning of this passage. Indeed, nowhere else where one of the rulers is named are they just given this sort of one-off title of the prince of whatever. We get the name Darius, Cyrus, Belshazzar, Nebuchadnezzar. Every one of the rulers that Daniel has served under is mentioned by name. So what we are looking at here. And indeed, if we are looking at someone who is having a conflict with this supernatural being and is aided by Michael, an archangel, we know his name from other places. We see him other places in the scriptures. He's called the Prince of Israel. So he has some role of protection over God's people. This is a supernatural conflict that is happening that Daniel is being given the privilege of seeing. This is not an ordinary occurrence. This is a battle in the spiritual realm. This is not something we can dismiss if we take the scriptures seriously. And when this messenger comes to Daniel, he brings word of what will come. He brings further visions, further clarity of what will happen. And indeed, this last vision that Daniel has takes him all the way to the end of time. We'll dig into that uh, towards the end of this series. But let me say this this morning. See, I believe very firmly that the devil has two main tricks that he likes to use against us. He's got a big toolbox. He's got two in particular in my take on this. One is to get us to pay too much attention to him. I have known people who are so concerned about the activities of the evil one that they can't think of anything else and, 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 and indeed spend all of their time praying against him and never actually spreading the gospel. I've seen that happen. But his other trick is to get us to ignore him completely. Pretend he doesn't exist. The fact of the matter is, when we seek to share God's word, we are opposed. There is a force out there. The evil one wants to stop the spread of the kingdom of God. And if we ignore that, we do so at our peril. Ask anybody who's been in the mission field, they will tell you spiritual warfare is an ongoing, regular occurrence. There are countless stories of those who have been uh, held back, who have been oppressed, who have faced uh, challenges from unseen forces and have seen prayer completely change that situation. They have seen the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly realms, as Paul calls them. And they've seen the difference that it makes when we pray. The same is true for us here in the States. Yeah, we, we as a culture pay less attention to those things, although that is shifting. If you look, uh, particularly the generation that's coming up, there is more attention to elements of the supernatural and, and spiritual matters than in our, our generations and prior. But we still are fighting a battle. And as we seek the Lord and ask for his hand to move and ask for him to protect us and ask for him to tear down the strongholds and ask for him to uh, 
work and make it possible for us to spread the gospel, we too are able to overcome. One of the things that Daniel gives us is an amazing look behind the curtain. The book of Revelation does the same thing. We get this peeling back of the layers of history and we can see that there are great forces at work. Daniel goes on to talk about uh, the prince of the kingdom of Greece as well. And we see that the things that are going on and the changes that take place in the years that follow Daniel, which truly overhaul the world as we know it, the kingdoms that follow after uh, Medo-Persia leave a, a stamp on Western culture and on worldwide culture that we still live in today. These things are shaped by forces beyond our sight. And as we seek the Lord, as we go out and we share the gospel, we need to be constantly approaching the throne of God, seeking Him in prayer because this struggle is not just against flesh and blood. But we are involved in a spiritual battle. So let us seek the Lord as we prepare to go out this week. Will you pray with me now? Almighty God, we thank you that you who is over angel armies is always by our side. That you who reign forever call us friend. And that we can put our trust in your strength. Lord, the enemy has formed many weapons against us, but none can stand against you. So help us to overcome, help us to break through whatever holds us back from sharing your word, whether it be fear, anxiety, sickness, pain, whether it be distraction or complacency. Help us to break through that we may share your word with all that we encounter. Protect us, watch over us, guide us and lead us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Dave. It's a good word. Thank you uh, for explaining that balance. I think that's key uh, between being aware of what the enemy is doing and not focusing too much. And uh, I think this song, this last song, the No Longer Slaves, uh, if we're aware of what uh, divine forces are, are up to in the world, we can better fight against them. But we, we never need to fear. Uh, so the song talks about how we are no longer slaves and here we do not need to fear. And that, that Jesus Christ has triumphed, and we have that victory. So please stand and sing with us. No longer slaves.